This looks gross, but it's so good. All right, cookie dough log. Insane or remain the same. Oh my gosh, these workouts are kicking my butt ever since taking that time off. So painful. Yeah, it's funny how when we took the time off in Mexico, like I felt like I was able to get back into it easier, but man, after New York, it really felt rough. I need to unpack. We got back Friday night. It's now Wednesday. I've unpacked a little bit. Ben even unpacked today and he hardly ever unpacks before me. A lot of times I unpack for him. Let's face it, I need a little motivation. Cookie dough is a huge weakness of mine. If I have it in the house, I will eat it. Have you ever tried this? You put cookie dough. This looks gross, but it's so good. All right, cookie dough log goes on here. I'm gonna set it for Ooh, it's a lot of cookie dough, so we'll start with 20 seconds. You don't want it too cooked. You want it undercooked, and it's just amazingly great. All right, you need a little bit more, because that was a lot of cookie dough. So 12 more seconds. Here you have it. A giant blob of semi-cooked cookie dough. I'm gonna turn on some tunes. Lord of the Rings. Here we go. It's nice and peaceful. It's time for Q&A. Red Rock 187 asks, what was the best and worst of New York? Do you ever wish on big trips you didn't take the kids or is it more enjoyable with them? How do you work around Rainier's schedule or does he just fit in around everyone else? That's three yeah, questions. Yeah, see what you did there. But I think we have time to answer them. Best and worst in New York, I feel like we already addressed that. Statue of Liberty was the worst. But the best for me was probably rowing boats in Central Park. Yeah, I think for me that was also the best. Uh, also just eating different kinds of really good food. I think if my kids were little, 
it would be easier to wish that they weren't with us on the trip because that's really hard. Um, although, I'm not sure what I'd feel now because that's how my 25 year old self would have felt. Well, especially a trip like this, the whole point of the trip was to enjoy these things together. Yeah. So. Yeah, this trip, yeah. No, I never at one, any point wished that we didn't take the kids with us. Yeah. Like to me, it was a blast being with them the whole time and watching them experience in New York. And as far as Rainer's schedule, he worked around our schedule. So that meant he took naps on the go. But there's tension there. In the stroller. Because you're saying, we're like, can we stay here for another hour and let him sleep for another two hours? Yeah, there's a little, not and much, I'm, but and there's I'm a like, little bit of tension. I'm like, let's go, he can sleep later. He did, he slept mostly just on the go, like in the stroller or he didn't sleep. Trips are nice because it, it actually gives us the ability to try out some new things. You know, there's no single right way with kids. Like people are like, oh, kids need a nap or not nap or sleep at this time or always have a set time or never have a set time. So whatever it is we're doing when we go on a trip, if we're flexible, the optimal way of doing the trip forces us to try something different. And then we're like, oh, he actually did really fine without taking a nap the whole day. Weird, we didn't know that could happen. Yeah. Or he can totally sleep in a stroller if he gets tired enough. Like, we didn't know that could happen. Or him melting down isn't the worst thing ever in the world. Adam and Joy plus seven asks, how difficult was it to stay on budget during your trip? Did you set a strict budget or have a really flexible one? So in yesterday's video, we talked about New York, but we didn't really talk about what our budget was. I think my budget was about uh, $10,000. That's what I wanted to spend less than. And we spent about $6,000. Yeah. And in some ways, like, I pinch pennies. Like, I like to think of the most efficient way to do this and that. But in New York, we kind of just, like, cut loose. Like, I was like, <laughs> hey, there's snow cones. We've been walking for three miles. Let's That's eat $4 good. snow cones yeah. uh, that are like organic and weird flavors. Like, let's get the most convenient food, not always, yeah. I don't think we like skimped on meals. We like kind of like, hey, if we're hungry and we like it or we're bored and want to eat something fun, let's buy it. So we didn't or say no to one ourselves. one person's really hungry, okay, we gave seven a couple bucks, go buy yourself a pretzel. Or Cammy wants a full massage for an hour by a giant black guy. It's like, why not? Go, Go for, for it. it. <laughs> Sammy Ray 7 says, I love seeing the different food on your trip. We are big foodies and love to try different cuisines wherever we go. What was your favorite food on the trip? I think the most adventurous eating experience was that tiny, crazy restaurant in the Bronx. Oh, that like yeah. Cuban food or I think it might have been Cuban. I actually don't know. I didn't know what I was ordering how much I was ordering, how much it was gonna things cost. Were in Spanish, so, or a lot of things were. But that wasn't my favorite food, but that was a fun experience. I think it was kind of memorable. Yeah. The Korean barbecue was my favorite meal, just cause that's like a nostalgic, and it's mm -hmm. like my favorite eating experience where you're cooking the food. If you have a Korean barbecue in your town with an all you can eat raw meat buffet, check it out. Uh, I also really liked that Jewish deli on our last day called Katz's. Hey, get out of here. That was a really unique experience, I felt it like. It was. I'm trying to think. I think up? we had these like onion rings that were really good. I, I had a few apple martinis that I really liked. I had like a Caesar salad I really liked. I didn't have like one place that I was like blown away, but I had different. We tried foods. not to do like Chipotle or Chick fil A or McDonald's or any place we could eat back home. So, like Shake Shack was kind of a local mm. fast food restaurant, that okay. was fun. Yeah, Shake Shack was my favorite, actually. Oh, we just struck a little yeah, I chord forgot. with you. Like, You're getting excited about that. I realized how much I like that place when some of the people wanted to get like lobster sandwiches or something and I'm like and Ben's like well there's also a Shake Shack who wants to do what and I was like the only one who wanted to do Shake Shack with Felia. Finally Heather Q asks why didn't you donate your beard to Locks of Love? Well imagine this scenario. For those we, men who don't. We donate my beard and then some guy gets it oh, and God. is walking around and Cammy sees it and all of a sudden this like 
in inner lust wells up and she's not able to control herself. So she jumps on the guy and starts doing things that she later regrets and causes this whole scene. <laughs> And I, we just kind of wanted to avoid mm. any type of questionable situation that could come up. I'm just like, that thing was gross once it was off your face. Wow. It did lose its power a little bit. All right, let's go. Oh, it's so nice out tonight. I'm ready for some sushi. Me too. Let's go. out here right now sitting in the city and check out these views there's one there's another right there sushi over there. They look really full to me. Walk away. Uh, oh. Oh. oh, look at that. Oh, I just left. Oh. Slipped yeah. through our fingers. I asked the guy something and he said sure. I don't know if he said sure, box it up or sure, take it away. Throw it in the garbage. That sushi is gone forever. But it's time for part two of the date. We just stumbled upon this like boxing match where these like kids are here and there's this like giant cigar event going on and they're gonna be fighting 10 kids from Ireland. All right, thanks man. I guess some of these guys paid like two grand per seat right over by the ring. And this guy just let us in for free. Hey Jim, please direct your attention towards our honor door as they move into place. I'm uh, I'm pleased to announce she it's the newest of the crown jewel in the, in the Queen City area here. I feel like the Irish kids. And on this like side of the stage, the gentleman from Cincinnati. USA kids ass. From Ireland, Tiernan O'Neill and Treshawn Siler from Cincinnati. really crazy intense we did not plan on coming across that boxing match but this is where the action's really at we're smoking our fancy cigars that we brought home from New York and the lady is checking if they have strawberry shortcake because once last year I came and they said I'm sorry sir we don't serve it anymore we stopped serving it yesterday yeah we still have it you got it yeah. all right How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Round number one in the books. 